But from a Canadian theatre point of view, <laughs> not to throw the ridiculous into this discussion, but you are describing a luxury that Manitoba Theatre Centre doesn't have, that no, Shaw absolutely. Festival doesn't have, that Stratford doesn't have. They don't have yeah. that kind of, no. well, let's do a mock-up. Uh, on stage. On stage yeah. and then look at it. Let alone, let's fly uh, Michael and Simon back and forth uh, over a number of months and see yeah. if they can come into something. No, I know. No, it's an incredible luxury. And um, So you are careful to, av to hopefully avoid situations where that economic box ties your, ties your design instincts very tightly to your desk, so to speak. Um, no, I think it was, I'm fortunate to work in those sort of situations where I can, right. um, where, where, where I'm able to do that. I think that's a better way of putting it. Um, I feel, you know, incredibly fortunate to be able to work in a situation like that in the, you know, Amsterdam mm -hmm. Opera, which is a fantastic facility with full of, uh, you know, these wonderful people who all know what they do and, and, and do their jobs incredibly well and, and have a, um, a kind of passion for the theater. And, um, I mean, I handed this design in, you know, so late and it was built, it was built beautifully. It's, it's light, it's this fantastic machine, it's beautiful. Um, and, you know, and now it's, go, it's going to, uh, well, it was supposed to go to St. Petersburg, but it's not going to St. Petersburg because of a funny thing with the rights. And then, but it's, but it's coming to the Met and it's doing, it's, you know, it's doing all these great things, which is, you know, wonderful. You used another phrase there. You said, uh, I wouldn't have, t I didn't have the time to react to it. And I think that's, again, to go back to the subject of collaboration. Right. I think what, perhaps what you really mean is time for Michael to react to things. And mm -hmm. I want to ask I about your reacting, because it's very mm -hmm. interesting. That's what collaboration is, sitting yeah, down yeah, and reacting yeah, yeah. to what the actress says or the director says or what the music says to me. Yeah. That's how I react to it. Yeah. So I guess my question is, what's the mechanism of your reaction? Mm -hmm. when you listen to a Wagner or a Benjamin Britten. Uh -huh. And what's your mechanism reacting to notes from a score mm -hmm. or words from a text? Because you describe mm -hmm. following character and how characters move and what they want. Yeah. But say, how do you react to music? Do you just sit down, shut the windows and play the score ten times? Yeah. You know, yeah, you listen to, 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 to... I mean, the best thing with, I think with Music, if you can, you listen to the whole piece all the way through. So you try to get a sense of what the uh, uh, reaction of an audience would be because they have to listen to it right the way through. So you try to have an uninterrupted listening of, of the piece um, and try to read the play right the way through. You know, you'd read without break and you kind of have a session. So you, you, know, you get the pace of, pace of the piece and you maybe read it a few times. Um, or listen to the opera a few times. Um, familiarize yourself with it. And then usually when I'm working on it, I'll, I'll, I'll do that again a few times with the director and we'll listen to the piece together and then talk about it and try to kind of discern what it's about. Um, and at the same time, you know, you come with a certain level of research that you've done about the the, 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 the opera or the theater piece when it was written. Maybe what is, what does Michael, what does Michael respond to it? I mean, when you listen uh -huh. to a Benjamin Britten, I mean, do you have a favorite? Is, does your musical taste or palette take you to uh, Stravinsky and Schoenberg or does it take you to uh, Wagner and Puccini? I mean, uh, how does Michael, I, I'm totally you know, I impressed as how you, uh, you're always thinking of someone else's reaction as you, you react to things and that's, <laughs> That's altruism, which is astounding. Uh, but how does the guy who then comes up with the idea, who right. says, what about this wall? What about that color? What about mud? What about this? Uh, where does Michael sit when he listens to the Puccini? Maybe he doesn't like Puccini, uh -huh. and he's doing no, a lot. I love Puccini. Okay. I love uh, Puccini. No, no. So, no are you, you, know, you, are you romantic in that sense? I'm or completely romantic, and I listen to the music and respond emotionally to the music. So. Um, but I don't, um, and you know, it's, I don't listen. To, it's like it's sort of almost a little bit dangerous to listen to something and think, "Oh, blue," you know. 
it's blue, it's going to be blue, and uh, or it's pink. Um, because then you have a meeting with a director and they say something complete, and it's very difficult to wipe out from your mind a preconceived idea that you've actually, a preconceived notion that you've had about. And I've got myself into trouble where I've had a very specific vision and come up, come up against somebody else who has a completely different vision and it's very difficult for me to erase my vision and to find some sort of collaboration with them. But, and sometimes, but sometimes it's very useful, sometimes it's very useful to have a very strong image or an idea when you're um, working on something and then, you know, to come up against that, when you come to begin to collaborate, um, you begin to sort of, you know, meet somewhere in between the two. Um, and sometimes things, you know, it's really, you know, you're sort of searching your way through it. And you're also getting to know the piece more and more as you begin to explore it. So you're getting closer and closer to the pace of the piece and, uh, how to get from one scene to the next, and you're solving problems and making problems at the same time. So you keep coming back and forth in the design process. I mean, you know, there's a really funny story when um, I was working with Tim Aubrey on Flying Dutchman, which we did for the op Royal Opera House last year, and we were searching, and we had I'd done several different designs, and ships and water and things and stuff <laughs> and you know there was lots and lots going on and we were just kept on running up against again a kind of brick wall where we'd get there and we think well that answers question a b and c but it doesn't ask, answer d e f g h or not. and then i was working late here in the studio one day and i thought oh i know I think what we need for this scene is a steel floor. So I'd made this steel floor, just a rough one out of cardboard, but kind of in pieces to go thing. And I was kind of, and it was really late. It was like 11 o'clock at night. And, and I was trying to put it in the model and I was like shoving it in the model and the corners got stuck in the corner of the model box and made this beautiful shape like this. And I thought, well, that's really beautiful shape. <laughs> And, and then I and got it down to sit on the ground. And then um, I came the next day and I had prepared a whole series of things for Tim to look at. And, um, and I showed all the different things and I said, well, you know, and then late at night, last night, I had this thing where at 11 o'clock at night, it was the thing and I was trying to shove it in the model. And he looked at it and he said, well, that's a, that's a beautiful shape and it says so much. What can we do with that shape? And then, in fact, we spent the rest of the day trying to build a design around this sort of mistake that happened and and then it became the side of a ship um, a sort of steel side of a ship and then a section of it came out and became a scene inside the ship and then so out of that came you know so right. sometimes you don't you know it's, you know you don't know what's going to happen um, but it comes out of constantly you know pushing to find the right thing I think I mean to put it in a if I wasn't talking to you, uh, who is a, a fantastic designer, it would sound like the blind leading the blind, groping forward and trying to find something. And mm -hmm. you and Tim's describing that. Yeah. But then again, your instincts and his instincts of listening, as you say, to uh, are so. Uh, but you know, uh, for example, you know the design. It's very interesting. Uh, I was so pleased with my shape. I thought, yeah, that's great. That's it. It's perfect. That's the design. It's going to be great. And everybody's going to love it. Um, <laughs> and Tim was, but how do we do this scene? And how do we do that scene? And, you know, and I would say, well, no, you just well, you put a chair on it and, you know, and maybe bring a table on maybe. And, um, and Tim was pushing. So that was part of the collaboration. And in fact, I didn't really want to be pushed all that much. Um, I thought they had been, you know, the design was finished. But in fact, by pushing, we kept finding. And right. so you know, by pushing to find out what was in the scenes, we found a design. And I think that's, you know, to me where, where, and then going back and listening to the music and listening to really, you know, you keep coming back and you listen to the kind of real, you begin to hear different nuances in the music that you didn't hear before because you're now in a slightly different 